Hey guys, welcome back to the Medbros channel. This is Herman here and I'm here making my first legit video for this channel. Uh, don't worry, Shaman's not going anywhere. He's just really busy right now and I thought I'd get in here and get some uh, videos going. Um, I'd also like to thank you guys that uh, have tuned in and watched our, my last video and have been following me on Instagram. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You guys are really, really nice in the comments. Um, so yeah, let's get right into this video. So you always hear about how medical school is so hard and how it's really hard to get in and even once you get in, it's all day, every day studying. So I wanted to discuss that and let you guys know the ins and outs of how much you actually have to study um, and how much you actually have to do to succeed in medical school and um, how much of a life you have once you get in. Uh, let's, let's start unpacking that a little bit. First things first, you always have to set your goals. So when you go into medical school, the goal isn't actually just to become a doctor. There are so many different things you can do um, by going to medical school. You can be working toward an MD, PhD. People do that track, so if down the road you actually don't even want to practice medicine, you can actually go ahead and just do research all day. Or you can do uh, family practice. Family practice is, you know, um, Taking care, of a, taking care of a broad range of patients uh, with a uh, you know huge a variety of different presentations and cases and they all come to you and you're the first line of defense and you usually get to know families, you get to know patients. Another route might be to specialize uh, where you want to do surgeries or you can specialize in something like gastroenterology where you just look at the GI tract or you can go ahead and get your MD, PhD and you can actually go ahead and not even practice medicine, you don't have to do research, you can just be uh, a teacher, a professor, uh, teaching you know, the next generation of medical students. Um, there's so many ways you can go about it. When you get to medical school, I think a lot of people think, you know, you're going to become a doctor, but within that, there's so many different routes and that is going to affect your lifestyle in medical school. It is It really does matter what medical school you go to, that's also going to determine your lifestyle. So someone like Shaman, who goes to a medical school where there is a kind of more teach yourself curriculum, a we don't hold your hand curriculum where you kind of figure things out on your own and you study your boards on your own and um, it's a little less uh, handholdy than someone like mine, my school's curriculum, which is really set on telling you um, what to do all the time, uh, which is a good and a bad thing. It, it definitely takes up a lot more of your time, but I have learned a whole lot by um, having really involved teachers and uh, faculty. So that's been a great, great thing, but again, it has taken a lot more time. So to summarize already, it's a, it could, the, the amount of work you're gonna be doing could be affected by your path that you choose, what you wanna do in the future. It could be affected by what school you go to and the curriculum, and it could be affected by just the way you learn and the way you study and, and what resources you use and what's your plan and how uh, quickly you acclimate to your curriculum. So with all those factors taken into mind, um, let's start unpacking how much do you really study. So someone like myself, who, when I came to medical school, I didn't, I still don't really know what field I exactly want to go into, but um, because, I, like I said, my school is very handholdy, I was studying nine to five classes, um, which were not mandatory. That is also another part of the curriculum: is your class mandatory or not? But I did go anyway, uh, nine to five for my first semester, um, which I highly regret because a lot of medical students will tell you that like nobody goes to class. If it's not mandatory, you don't go to class. It's a funny joke that literally during the first year, uh, first two years of my medical school, all, every time something was announced, every time there was an event, um, the first question is, is it mandatory? And if it's not mandatory, you probably shouldn't go to it because you should probably be at home studying on your own because I just find, and a majority of students I talk to, find that a self-paced kind of self-directed study plan seems to be working a lot better for them. And I think studies have shown that in my school also is trying to adopt this this more self-study um, kind of learning style. But yeah, so I went to school nine to five every day, but, but I did figure out quickly during my second semester that you probably should not go to classes. And the second I figured that out, my life became so much easier. Medical school at that point 
dare I say it, was pretty easy. I would have the entire morning free and then I think we would have still like doctoring classes where they teach us like how to actually be a doctor, um, like Tuesday, Thursday or something like that. And then the rest of my time was just my time and I would go to the gym when I wanted to. Uh, I goofed off quite a bit um, and I still got my studying done. And my day would typically look like wake up like 10 o'clock and get uh, go to the gym, start my studying at like 12 after eating. I'll study until like five and then take another break, a big one, probably till like eight and then eight to 10 study and then go to bed. So that was like a typical day for me after I figured out the game. I, this coming from a person that always in high school and in college, the first thing I would do is I would open up the syllabus and read the syllabus on how, the what is the least amount of work that I have to do to get an A and what can I skip and where can I, you know, what class can I skip? How many free days do I have? So I didn't, I didn't at all give up my life and I wasn't in the books all day um, for my first two years of medical school. If you do go to a school that has nine to five mandatory every day, um, some schools are like that and those schools are probably the ones where you are hearing about the rumors of, of do you give up your life for medical school. In those schools, I could totally see nine to five everyday mandatory and then like if they were doing what I was doing my first semester, that is literally every day, all day studying. And then Saturday, Sunday you have off, but you're probably studying Saturday and Sunday because mandatory class time is great, but I just don't feel like I learn anything when I'm sitting there in front of a professor and I think a lot of people are like that as well. So it ends up just being a waste of time with you kind of on Facebook or you trying to do your own thing in class and you know the teacher's talking and you're not following and you're totally lost. So I definitely think uh, schools need to start moving away from that and going toward a more self-study kind of approach. Uh, but which is a separate video, I'll definitely be going over that. Despite me figuring out the system though, one thing that is true is there is always the trifecta of, you can probably group family and friends into one and then uh, yourself into one and then your career into one. Out of those, you kind of do have to pick two. I still remember, um, despite me having all that free time and figuring out the system and 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 uh, you know have, feeling like I had a lot of free time, I still had to make sacrifices. Don't let anyone ever scare you away about, oh, medical school is so hard. You always have people telling you that, oh, this is too hard or this is crazy. I still remember back in high school where um, in 10th grade, this is before you can take AP classes. I think you can take pre-AP classes or something like that. Um, I remember I wanted to take six of them and the teacher was telling me like, dude, there's no way you're gonna be able to do this. There's no way you're gonna be able to manage six AP classes, like just chill out. I was like, no, I'm gonna take six, like I'm, I'm fine. Like if it's too hard, like that sucks. And I just took it and I quickly figured out like, no, this is totally doable. It's where you set the bar for yourself. You might think that you cannot study like 10 hours a day. You will find a way and your mind will adjust to, to study 10 hours a day. If I play basketball with Kobe every single day, no, that's not a good analogy. Kobe would probably school me every single day. But if I played basketball with someone in like the G League every single day, um, I would start playing at that level. I would be making exponential gains, you know what I mean? Versus whether if I just sat in my backyard all day playing basketball by myself, you don't make those gains. You don't think you can ever be at that level, which is, what medical school is, when you get thrust into medical school and your teacher says, read this book by tomorrow, you, when the bar is that high, you will step step up to it. And it is not as crazy as it seems. You can apply that to anything. If you are ever intimidated by something, if you are ever uh, discouraged to do something, just always remember, you will rise exponentially to the standards if you set your mind right. But overall, there are, you know, it is, I'm making it sound all happy and nice, but there are some things you give up for medical school. There are countless weddings that I've missed. There's countless you know, family functions I've missed, important family functions um, that I've missed, friends uh, um, get togethers and you know, uh, your friends will start bailing out on you uh, because you're, you used to hang out with them and, and you just don't see them anymore. Uh, that's gonna happen. Like that's just time and separation is just does that to you. While you're in the books, you're gonna see people out there getting married and living their lives and doing all these great things and you're in the library studying. But 
if you go in there with that mindset of uh, really wanting to be a doctor for for what the reasons are, if your reasons are like money and this and that, the field really isn't worth it. I'm sure everyone here has heard it a hundred times over that if you're just in it for the money, you shouldn't do medicine. And going back to what I was saying about what path you want to take, if you want to do something like family medicine, the fact of the matter is you don't have to work as hard as somebody that wants to do orthopedic surgery or um, you know, gastroenterology or even if you want to do it in a tougher state, like if you want to get a residency in California, you're going to have to put in more time than if you want a uh, residency out in like Louisiana or Alabama or something like that. Like these are facts that you should probably consider. And then you can also cater how hard you want to work. If you go to a pass no pass school, you can spend a fraction of the time that somebody in a, gr a great a school with grades and ranks is going to take to uh, study. Additionally, if you're going down a path of family practice, you can chill. Like you will probably match into family medicine versus somebody who's doing orthopedic surgery, who is going to do all they can do to be number one in their class. So um, everything is on a gradient. Everything is uh, has multiple layers to it and you just have to consider all those layers and take it one step at a time and understand that um, you you really are the person that creates your schedule in medical school and what kind of doctor you're gonna be. You can navigate your way through it in a way that you will have a lot of free time. So it's not as doom and gloom as everyone makes it out to be. You will have a life, you'll be fine. Uh, I highly recommend if you're interested in medicine, go shadow a doctor, go figure it out, um, and then watch a bunch of pre-med things, go watch Shaman's Tips, uh, they're all up here on this channel, and uh, you know, go for it. Go for it and be a doctor. Don't be scared off by people telling you it's a lot of work or it's too hard or anything like that. You'll be totally fine. So yeah guys, that was this video. I hope you enjoyed me rambling. I know I've taken over Shaman's room here. It's looking totally barren. I'll do something about my setup here uh, for future videos, uh, but bear with me right now. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me know if there's any specific topics you guys want me to cover and I'll totally do it. And I'll look into it. Stay tuned for more stuff guys. I'm gonna do some like non-medical school related stuff too. It's not just medicine I wanna you know focus on. There's a lot of other uh, topics I want to touch. My Instagram's in the description and uh, you guys can subscribe to this channel and Shaman will be back. Shaman's just taking a little break to do research and study and do his thing. Uh, he'll be definitely posting more videos. Uh, thanks for listening guys. I hope it was interesting and I'll see you guys when I make the next one. Later.